Well, we're near the end, and quite frankly, I can't wait to finally put this series behind me so I can move on with my life. But as you can tell by the title, this is the last bit of the series that actually feels like it's a worthy addition to the series. It's the arc where we finally get answers to what happened on that fateful night the fourth Okage sealed the Nine Tails inside of Naruto. It's an arc that was a long time coming, and for what it's worth, I feel Kishimoto genuinely delivered. But before we analyze why it was so good, it's time for some backstory! During the time of the series, Kishimoto was a very busy man. In the time of Naruto's publication, he got married and had two kids. It was around this time that Kishimoto's wife actually came up to him and basically said something along the lines of, Now that you have kids, don't you want to show Naruto's family? And that she wanted Naruto's mother to get involved in the story. Kishimoto said something along the lines of, It was originally going to be one to two chapters, but at her insistence, it became a full volume. Wow, uh, do you not care about your main character's history? I guess because it's not Uchiha related, why would you? So, whatever the case, Naruto tells the rest of the Konai kids to leave Sasuke to him. Tsunade wakes up, so we are spared Kakashi becoming Hokage. Oh boy, that reminds me of the ending. I'd be getting ahead of myself though, so we're not going into it yet. Remember Kakashi's line of being unworthy for the position. I will. Anyway, Naruto gets summoned by the great Toad Sage, who tells Naruto his future that he will meet an octopus, and fight a young man with powerful eyes, but Naruto cuts him off saying that he already knows all that, and yeah. I mean, you could have at the very least let him finish Naruto. It might have been useful info. But it's important because they give him the key to undo the fourth seal. It's finally time for Naruto to confront the Ninetales. Meanwhile, Kabuto decides to form an alliance with Madara, while showing a secret coffin that gets him a little nervous. The whole purpose of this scene is so Kishimoto could provide an army for Madara to fight with, which makes me wonder... Just what exactly was his plan? Kabuto came to him, not the other way around. Really, this was done because Kishimoto realized that he wrote himself into a corner by killing off most of his villains before the war arc, so he had to bring them all back to life so the army would have something to fight. For what it's worth, I did agree with Naruto's reasoning here that he needs to stop running from the Ninetales' power, and he needs to embrace it if he wants to have a chance at beating Sasuke. Meanwhile, the Kage gets to decide that the best thing to do is to hide Naruto and kill Urbisa so that Madara can't track them, which is stupid. Why would you not want to have your most powerful ninja on the battlefield? Let's bear in mind, Madara does have seven of the nine tailed beasts already. But whatever the case, Naruto and Kilorbi finally meet, and let's just say I love this. Kishimoto finally gave me what I wanted. Two idiots interacting with each other, and it's hilarious. Anyway, Killer B agrees to help Naruto master his tail beast and takes him to the waterfall where Naruto encounters another Naruto. It's kind of like when Luke entered the cave in the Empire Strikes Back and found himself in Darth Vader, a twisted mirror version of himself. There's a lot of potential here. Also, Dark Naruto's design isn't very original. Maybe it could have been like Dark Link, where he's basically just Link colored black with red eyes. That would have gotten the point across better. Anyway, Dark Naruto basically lectures Naruto about how he's so easily slayed by helping the villagers, despite them treating him like crap for years. That's part of it, but I was hoping we'd get more insight into Naruto's shortcomings, like what's going on with Sasuke, is he even worth saving? What's going on with Sakura, Kakashi, his feelings on Jiraiya being dead? Did he fail him? There was so much potential for some good character digging here, and it feels like Kishimoto wasted it. Anyway, we get a brief flashback as to how Killer B gained control of the Eight Tails, which just serves as another Naruto-Sasuke parallel, because 60% of Naruto's lore are Naruto-Sasuke parallels. Anyway, random squid attack, which is meant to show that Killer B is compassionate and that Naruto should be too. So Naruto goes back and pretty much talks his dark side down. Yeah, talk no jutsu, but in this case I don't mind it because I understand what Kishimoto was going for. Everyone has a light and dark half, it's the side we act on that determines who we truly are, and Naruto was accepting that his dark half was a part of him. So now Naruto finally confronts the Ninetales. It's actually really well done, as Naruto must confront the evil of the Ninetales Demon Fox, which has been said to be pure evil force. Just when it looks like Naruto will lose, but then the light comes in and it's Kashina, Naruto's mother. Kishimoto did a good job with her introduction. It's a good shift from comedy to heartwarming. Kashina helps Naruto take down the Ninetales, and mother and son talk, and it's very nice. They're very similar in personality. Then Naruto asks Kashina how she and Minato fell in love. 
Yeah, I'm getting a bit off tangent, but fuck you, the last, for saying that Naruto doesn't know the difference between loving a person and loving food, despite clear evidence to the contrary in the manga. Despite being billed as canon, you will never be canon to the manga, as far as I'm concerned, and you're just a terrible movie in general. I probably will have to address that movie when I get to the ending. I'd love to make a critique tearing that movie apart, but there's no way I could do it without getting flagged for copyright, and the Naruhina shippers would probably want my head on a platter. They're rather tenacious. <clears throat> anyway, Kashina tells Naruto the story of how she and Minato fell in love, and it's so good and engrossing for the first time in a while, I was legitimately enjoying Naruto again. Helps that that loathsome cunt Sasuke isn't involved. There's a certain quality that comes out whenever Sasuke isn't in the picture. Naruto is both of his mother's and father's wills together, but now it's time for mother and son to get to work, and it's outright badass the way they subdue the Ninetales, and Naruto gets the results of it with a, what is basically a Super Saiyan ripoff. I mean, no, really, that's basically what it is. It was still kind of disappointing. We barely got to see him use Sage Mode, and Kishimo is already giving him a new form. But before Kishina can move on, she's going to tell Naruto the truth of what happened that night 16 years ago. Kishina was the original Jinjuruki of the Ninetales, and that the Yuzumaki clan were an offshoot of the Senju clan which is another example of Kishimoto barely going into the Yuzumaki clan. But anyway, Kishina tells Naruto that there's one moment where the seal is weakest, and it's during childbirth. Which means a male host will never have that problem, but I digress. Of course, Kishimoto put in a scene with baby Sasuke with their moms hoping that they'll be friends, because of course he did! Anyway, the birth goes without a hitch, but then the masked man appears. Man, that is such an evil man. Such a great way of conditioning us to hate him. Really hope Kishimo doesn't try to make him sympathetic. The masked man extracts the nine tails from Kishina, and he sticks it on Konoha with only the fourth Hokage standing in his way. The action is so good, and we get to see why the fourth Hokage is so well known because he's so fast. It's just awesome to look at. They're able to get the nine tails sealed down, and Kishina, with her dying breath, says that she will take the nine tails into her and die with it. But Minato can't bear the thought of Kishina never meeting her son, so he does something rather hasty and ensures that Naruto will grow up without either of his parents, but then I suppose he's highly emotional at this point, so he's probably not thinking straight. Kashina's dying moments are to fill her son with as much love as she can, and it's really heartbreaking, and Minato just agrees with her. Then one final heartbreaking scene as Naruto says goodbye to his mother. Considering the foreknowledge of what ultimately ended up happening, it's all the more sadder. But not yet, not yet. Anyway, that's not quite the end of the arc. Kisame attacks, and Guy steps up to stop him because it's kind of fitting. The fight between Guy and Kisame is adequate. It's not my favorite, but it does its job well enough, and Studio Pro did an absolutely crap tacker job in animating it, but that's one of their many failures. Kisame has a flashback, which, unless you're Naruto or Sasuke, is typically a sign of death oncoming in this series. Kasame dies, and it's about damn time! But before we wrap up, Madara has decided to go visit Conan. He needs something of Nagato's. Conan absolutely owns Madara. He really can't fight. Madara only wins through another Sharingan Aspel, the Isignage, which basically allows people to bend reality to their will or something. Yeah, I guess eyes can do that. Conan dies, which is a bit of a shame as I feel Kishimoto wasted her potential. Imagine if she came to help Naruto during the war. It would have been epic and would have made her character much more memorable. How come Conan never fought Sakura? The setup was perfect, yet Kishimoto did nothing with it. Anyway, some other setup stuff happens. Yamato gets captured and is probably forgotten about till the end of the series, which is odd. But the stage is set for the war to begin, and that is where we will leave off for now. Let me tell you something. I just finished chapter 514. And this series is 700 chapters, which means the remaining 185 chapters covered this war. And, oh boy, it had some good build-up and people were hyped when it began. But unfortunately, it didn't live up to expectations. However, I call this video one last bit of quality because... It is. The story of Naruto's parents is well done. It's heartbreaking, beautiful, and there is a passion and a soul put into it. A story without a soul isn't a story at all. I maintained hopes because of this that the ending of the war would be memorable. 
And unfortunately, that was not the case. But it's time to dig deep into this. The next arc is the longest arc of Naruto. I know people break this into three arcs, but for me, it's one big arc. And I'm prepared to go fully deep into it on why the war arc sucked. That's going to be quite the journey. Anyway, if you've been enjoying these videos, please hit that like, bell, and subscribe button. It really helps me out. Thanks. の